Let's make assorted cupcakes using one base recipe. This is perfect for Mother's Day, bake sales, graduations, or parties. Instead of making five different cupcake batters, I'm going to show you today how to make one simple base cupcake recipe and quickly transform it into five different flavors. The possibilities are endless and there's minimal cleanup. You loved my assorted cookie box, my bagel box, so let's make a cupcake box without the box. We're going to start out by making the base, a vanilla cupcake batter, which is different to your standard cupcake batter, but also very similar as it starts out by creaming the butter, the sugar, and vanilla extract. Once we've made this batter, I'm then going to show you how to take this batter and make completely different flavored cupcakes just by adding additional ingredients to the same recipe. I've mixed in three large eggs and we're going to add the flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. We're also gonna add the milk and lemon juice which will react with the baking soda giving the cupcakes a beautiful rise and a beautiful soft texture. The batter may seem a bit curdled and that's okay. It's due to the lemon juice. It will not affect the outcome of your cupcakes if not in a great way. Scrape the bottom and sides of your bowl and your vanilla cupcake batter is done. Can you guess which cupcakes we're going to make first? Vanilla? Wrong. We're going to make lemon cupcakes first and there's a reason for that. We want to minimize the cleanup, so we're not going to divide the batter into five different bowls. Instead, we're going to assemble the first three flavors directly in the cupcake pan. The reason we're making the lemon cupcakes first is to avoid spreading lemon oil all over the other cupcakes. If you've ever zested lemons, you know lemon oil shoots out in all different directions. And if there were cupcakes in the pan, chances are they would probably end up tasting like lemon cupcakes. Clean up the zest, stir the lemon zest into your cupcakes, and this batch is done. Put the paper liners back into the pan, and let's make two other flavors. The second flavor we're going to make is vanilla, so I'm not going to add anything to this one. And the third flavor is going to be cookies and cream. Now what you can do is crush up some Oreos and stir those directly into your liners, or I personally like to use mini Oreos. I love biting into cookies and cream cupcakes and, you know, tasting actual huge pieces of Oreos. But you could do smaller pieces, you could do fine crumbs, whatever you prefer. Now the last two cupcakes we're going to make are chocolate and red velvet cupcakes. You didn't think we were going to make assorted cupcakes and not have chocolate or red velvet, did you? Now this is where we will be using a second bowl. You're going to divide the batter in half and to one half we're going to add cocoa powder. The ingredient amounts, by the way, and the printable recipe step by step will be on my website, Emma. Fontanella.com. And if you're new to my channel, hello there, welcome. Make sure to subscribe. I post new videos every week. We're also going to add milk. Cocoa powder absorbs liquids, so we do want to put some moisture back into the recipe. For the red velvet cupcakes to the second bowl, we're going to add cocoa powder and red food coloring. The original base recipe already contains buttermilk fake buttermilk, I should say, as it's milk and lemon juice. So besides the food coloring and the cocoa powder, we don't need to add anything else. Bake the cupcakes at 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius for about 22 to 25 minutes. As always, do the toothpick test. Every oven is different. If there's no wet crumbs, the cupcakes are ready. What I love about this recipe is that it's also educational. This is a perfect example of what happens when you overmix your batter. You can see the first three cupcakes are nice and flat, but the chocolate and the red velvet cupcakes have more of a domed crack top. They're just as soft and delicious as the flat ones. A lot of people think if you overmix cake batter, you develop gluten, but it's actually quite difficult to develop gluten in cakes since there's so much fat content in cakes. If you think about bread making, it takes a good six to eight minutes to actually start to develop some gluten. Anyway, regardless, you do not want to overmix cake batters, not for gluten issues, but for many, many other issues. Allow these to cool completely and we're going to make the frosting. I'm going to make a cream cheese frosting as I feel it pairs really nicely with the lemon cupcakes, the red velvet cupcakes, and the cookies and cream cupcakes. But you can make whatever frosting you like. To make my cream cheese frosting, you want to start by mixing the room temperature butter. We want to cream this for about a minute to get rid of any lumps. The trick to making stiff, pipable cream cheese frosting is to use very cold cream cheese and super soft 
butter. I developed this method years ago and all of you who've tried it really love it. In another bowl, whip the cream cheese with the powdered sugar and vanilla for about 30 seconds. We want to maintain the cream cheese as cold as possible, so do not whip this for more than 30 seconds. You'll see the cream cheese will go from stiff to almost runny. That's the powdered sugar drawing out the water from the cream cheese. After 30 seconds, very quickly add the butter all at once and mix as quickly as you can. The mixture will thicken within seconds and you'll have the most creamy but stiff cream cheese frosting. It's like magic or just science. The cream cheese will go from loose to stiff and pipe a bowl. Now this is obviously vanilla cream cheese frosting. You can dye it, you can flavor it with cocoa powder if you wish. I'm going to divide mine between two other bowls. This is optional by the way. I just love pink cream cheese frosting for red velvet cake, so I'm going to dye this batch pink. I'm also going to add some cocoa powder to another bowl um, with cream cheese to make chocolate cream cheese frosting for my chocolate cupcakes. Again, the measurements and the full detailed instructions will be on my website, or you can just get the rest recipe in the description box below. It's such an easy, time-saving recipe to make many different flavored cupcakes. There's so many possibilities, you can customize these however you wish. I did scale these down to make 12 cupcakes, but feel free to double or triple this recipe if you're having, let's say, a bake sale. Put these in a box, bring these to a party, to a barbecue, bring these to work if you're celebrating a birthday or retirement. They're soft, delicious, and a true crowd pleaser. Everyone will think you've gone mad making so many different cupcakes cupcake batters, but you and I know how easy these were to make. If you'd like more customizable recipes like this one, where from one recipe you make many different flavors, check out my cookie box, my bagel box, or even my brownie box. I'll leave the links to those videos in the description box below.